In this screencast, we'll briefly introduce the idea of randomized algorithms, and then we will take a look at a detailed example of skip lists. In our probabilistic analysis of algorithms, we had to assume a distribution of inputs. It was easier to make a guarantee of performance if we assumed that the input data was randomly organized, and then we used that assumption to come up with expected case analyses. But sometimes we can't assume that it's, the input is random. In fact, one way of thinking about this is suppose you have an adversary, the, the, your evil ne nemesis who's going to try to mess up your program by giving you the worst possible input. Is there a way to foil your adversary by somehow, uh, no matter how bad the input they give you, somehow changing it so that you're, you can still give the guarantee that we got through the analysis of expected runtimes on random data? Well, a simple idea that the textbook discusses with the higher assistant problem is just to add a line at the beginning that randomizes the list of candidates. Uh, we can also think of this for the sorting algorithms. If, if a sorting algorithm performs poorly on a certain organization of input data, but is expected to perform well in the average case on random input data, why don't we randomize the input data? Of course, we don't want this randomization to cost a, a lot in relation to the algorithm that we're trying to optimize. So the text discusses cheap ways to randomize the data in place. This, for example, is a randomized in place algorithm that simply swaps the data in place with the data at a random position. And the text offers a proof that this produces a uniform random permutation and is you can clearly see that it is big O of n in time. So we will see examples of randomized algorithms throughout the textbook. And these are ways for us to make guarantees about the runtime of our algorithms, regardless of what this bad guy might be trying to do. Let's now look at our first example of skip lists. OK, I introduced skip lists here for several reasons. They're a natural extension of the linked list implementation that we've already looked at, but more efficient than linked lists. And we're going to include them in our homework, which will be a comparison of different dynamic set implementations. And they're a good example of a randomized algorithm, where a randomization improves the expected asymptotic behavior from order of n to order of log n. The discussion of skip lists comes from the textbook of Goodrich and Tamasia, Data Structures and Algorithms in Java. That's a good textbook to get if you want a software engineering oriented reference on data structures and algorithms. So what is a skip list? Well, the motivation here is let's say we have a linked list and the problem we had was that it was order of n to search down this list. And so we might wonder, well, you know, with binary search of arrays, you can just you know, dive in the middle somewhere and then see where you are and then go in whatever direction uh, you need to go to find what you're looking for and it has order of uh, log n behavior. But a skip list, uh, a, a linked list, you have to search for the whole thing and so that's until you find something and so that gives you order of n behavior. Uh, so how can we improve on that? Well the idea of a skip list is we will first of all put in a special cell at the beginning and end of each list that's going to have the value negative infinity and infinity. And so these will serve as markers that when you hit one of these, you know you're at the end of the list. But now we're going to make a second level list, S1, which is also marked by negative infinity and infinity. And um, all the other elements in our list are going to occur in the next list with probability of one half. Now, if we engineered this, you know, pre-engineered such a list, you might say, okay, let's take every other one is going to have a superior item, C. So that's carefully engineered. Maybe up here we just have um, a C. And these actually point to each other, but in the actual skip list, the nodes are implemented as quad nodes, which have above and below pointers, as well as the traditional prev and next and, and the key. You know, it's got the data, and then it's got four different cells pointing in the four directions. But to keep the diagram simple, we won't usually draw all these. So the idea here is that you get behavior somewhat like a binary search or a well-balanced binary tree, because if you search at the top level, you can very quickly 
do what is essentially diving into the middle. So if I search and say, yeah, I'm looking for E, for example, you can say, well, it's not here, and then you can check at the end. Well, it's smaller than that, so we know it's got to be between that and that. So let's go down a level. And so you do the same thing. If we're searching for E, then you look there. Well, that's still bigger than E, so then let's go down a level, and we look here, and there's E. And so on a large list, rather than having to check order of N items, it's going to be, and I will show this, but it's going to be order of log N, because each level cuts the data in half. So that's the basic idea behind skip lists. But we can't um, know in advance all the keys and carefully engineer that you know, this, this, the first level above level zero has every other, and then the second level of that has every other one of that. Because items are going to be inserted and deleted in the list, and you don't want to have to pay the cost to reorganize the whole list you know, to make the second level be exactly every other one of the first level and so on. Um, so the way that is dealt with is by randomization. So in constructing the list, what we actually do is we say, after we've inserted an item at a, a first level here, we flip a coin. We say, should we now insert, for example, when we inserted this E, should we insert it at the next level? We flip a coin, uh, comes up tails or no, we do not insert it. Or if we flip the coin, it comes up yes, and then we insert it, it ends up here, but we flip it again, it comes up no, it does not go there. This one, we flipped the coin three times, and it did end up there. An obvious question is, well, how high can this get? If you're worried about it, you can write code to bound it to say, well, we're not going to let the list get, say, higher than three log n. But it turns out that the probability of getting high stacks is so small that you really don't even have to write that code. And we will also do an analysis show that in a minute. OK, here's a cleaner diagram of the skip list data structure, a simplified diagram. Because, as I mentioned before, these are implemented with uh, quad nodes. You can think of it as having pointers in both directions. Actually, there is a simplification of this data structure, a modification of the algorithms I'm going to show you, that where you can get rid of half of these pointers. You can, you can do it with just the ones going down. But we're going to assume that it looks something like that, and you can mentally fill in all the rest. Now, notice that every row has negative infinity and positive infinity. So we know that any row that we search, the, any key we're looking for is going to fit between the two end elements. Uh, let's suppose we're looking for the key uh, 45. Okay, How would this search work? Well, the search starts at the position, uh, the top leftmost position of S. This would probably be an instance variable of your class. Uh, we might call it, um, maybe I'll just write it in here, maybe we're going to call this node S, because that's a distinguished node that indexes to your data structure. So if we're looking for key uh, 45, uh, we start there, and then we say, well, below P is not null. P is below P. So we don't actually search here, because this top-level list, we know that it's empty. It's there just so we're ready to um, do other insertion operations and so on. Uh, so while below P is not null, do P is below P. So let's say where we are now. This is, we're currently right there. And then we're going to say, while well, key next P is less than or equal to K, okay, the key of next P is less than or equal to K. That's true. It's 45. We're looking for 45, and this is 31. So P is next P. So now we're going to move um, my little yellow pointer here is representing P. We are now here. And then we say, do the inner loop again, while key next P is less than K. Uh, no, it's greater because it's infinity, uh, so we don't we exit the inner loop. But now we go to the outer loop, and again, if it's not null, we step down one level. So go below, and we now do the, uh, the same check. Is the key less than k? Yes, it is. So now we have to advance p going forward one level. Uh, so now we're there. Then we check again. That one's bigger. Uh, so we exit the inner loop, and then we use the below operation to go down. P is now there. We're looking for 45. The uh, next key is less than. So again, we do the movement of P forward. So P is now pointing to the 44 node. The next check through that loop, it fails. This key is greater than what we're looking for. So we exit the inner loop. The outer loop says, well, below P not equal null, but it is null. That tells you that you've gotten to uh, S0. The bottom list always has every element, and so now we return P. So this is the position returned. 
Now notice, if we were looking for 44, we, this would have returned the position of the key we're looking for. Uh, so I've demonstrated both how to do a search for something that's there and something that's not there. Uh, if we're returning, if we're looking for 44, we, we would have returned the node we're looking for, uh, but we're looking for 45. So this has actually returned the node where we're supposed to do the insertion, uh, because the insertion will now happen in there, and we're at just the right place to be prepared to do that. So the next thing I will show you is the insertion code. Okay, now we're going to do insertion. Suppose we want to insert the data, uh, insert some data under key 15 in this skip list. Uh, here's the skip insert procedure. A couple things to note, uh, the skip list probably has some instance variables that uh, store important information about the data structure. Um, S would be the start node, so S is pointing to the upper left node where all operations start. H, the height, uh, so H is currently 2, a height of 2, and n stores the number of entries just so we know how many things are in the dynamic set. So the skip list insert begins by just calling search. And as we saw with the uh, previous example, uh, if we're looking for a key, it's going to return the position before the position that has a key larger than the one we're looking for. So that's what's indicated here by the uh, p0. This is the first going to be the first value of p after the skip search. Uh, now the skip Insert uses an, a, an auxiliary procedure called insert after above. And what it does is it creates a new node with the key and the data that's stored under it. And it puts that new node after whatever you give here and above whatever you give here. Uh, right now, there is nothing to put it above because we're at the bottom list. We're at S0. So we want to insert after that P and above nothing, the K and D. So we want to put something right here. And that is indeed what happens right here. That's how this node gets put in. And Q is now assigned to be this node here. Okay, so we've succeeded in putting the, uh, the data in the first level of the skip list. But now the question is, should we put it up in higher levels? Okay, so what do we do? Well, we initialize L to be the uh, level that we're currently at, which is 0. Uh, so we're currently at level 0. And then you flip a coin or call a random number generator and it comes up heads or it's less than or equal to one half. Then we're going to want to put the item in the next level of the list. So we increment um, L to indicate we're now moving up a level. So we're now at level one. And then we check to see whether we've run out of levels because remember as you add data, these towers can get higher and higher. We'll get back to this code in a bit. Right now we have not run out of levels. So we're gonna to go to the usual case uh, where we want, we've decided by this coin flip to put it in this level. So where do we want to put it? Uh, we want to put it up here, so we have to find the node before, so we can call insert after after that and above this, which we already have. So we find this no node here by saying, and remember right now this is p, so while above p is null, it's null, do p is prev p, so that moves us over here to this this node here, and now above p is not null, so this line down here says P is above P. Uh, so now let's say this is now P up here. So we just did that from moving the other there by going uh, prev until we have an above and then moving one above. And now we can call insert after above PQ. So it will insert a new node after P above Q. And that's how we get this node here. And in the process, we reassign Q to be the new node we just inserted here. Now we can... Repeat, we can say, flip a coin again. Should we insert it again? And let's say it comes up again. And so we go through the whole, the same thing again. Whereas here, above P is not null. So we immediately go to the P is above P step here. So immediately we can say, um, this is now P. And uh, then we can call insert after above. And that gives us this node here is now inserted. And uh, Q becomes uh, this node here. So I actually skipped a step here because at that last, uh, before this happened here, this insertion, we had um, L had been incremented uh, to uh, 2 at this point. And since H is 2, we now have a case where we have to add the extra level, which is this level here. And so the way that happens is uh, we, we now increment a, a H to be 3, and T is next of S. Uh, remember from over here, this is currently S. So this becomes T, and then um, 
we're going to make a new S. We'll be insert after above. Uh, there's nothing to go after, but we want to go above us S and put negative infinity. Um, so that is what makes this be the new S right here. And then we want to insert after above that new S, after that new S, above the T, the positive infinity. But that's what makes this node here be created. So that was this bit of code, which actually would have executed before we did this last insertion, because we always maintain the invariant that there's an empty list up there to put stuff in. Okay, so that's the overall insertion procedure. Of course, at the end, we uh, increment the total count of items in the, in the um, data structure. Now, I'm not showing you the code for deletion. We'll just note briefly that the task of deletion is to find the tower of items. And essentially, it's just uh, like linked list delete, except that besides just deleting from the base level, you have to ask, is it up above at the next level, delete from there? Is it up above at the next level, delete from there? So one way to write this is to do the search, find the bottom of the tower, and then step your way back up the tower deleting. But there is a w more efficient way to write the deletion such that as you go down, when you see the node, you delete it, and then you use your usual search procedure to go down to where you would have gone before. Just use below from the node that you just deleted. Find that node, delete it. Use below, find that node, delete it. Uh, so that can be done fairly quickly in as much time as it takes to do the search. And actually, the insertion and the deletion can be written in the same time it takes to do the search uh, big, in big O terms. Well, that concludes the presentation of the skip list algorithms and data structure. And the next screencast will actually analyze its performance.